Good morning. We're going to grab our bands and take our hands overhead. Tilt you up a little bit. Take your hands overhead with the band. Pull down with your exhale. Good to see you. And two. Oh, what's that light? And three. Four. Five. Six. Knees are soft. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10, 11, 12, 13. Good, we're gonna look at our wrists just to make sure that they're pretty neutral, they're pretty straight. The ribs are pulling down, just giving our body a chance to wake up. Take two more, exhale, and one more. And then when your arms are down, take a little roll, roll it through your shoulders, five, four, three, two, and then take the band behind you, right around your shoulder blade area. Let me see if this works a little. Ah, there it is. Forgot to do that one. Okay, press out with your exhale. Exhale, press. Your palms are facing up. Knees are long and soft. Exhale. Six. Seven, eight, ten more, twelve, thirteen, five more, seventeen. Looks good. I like the control on the way back. Two more, and one. Perfect job, give it a little roll. Five, four, three, two, and then stand on the band in the middle. Both feet is a little harder. I'm gonna uh, suggest two in the middle. It also depends on your strength, your band strength and your height. Bend your elbows and straighten. Bend your elbows. <clears throat> And if you have the band without the handles, it's a little easier to hold it hammer girl sometimes. So I like it, Michelle. It should feel good on your wrist. So if you look at your wrists, they're flat throughout the range of motion. Your chest and shoulders, I'll show you from the side, are open, not poking forward. Ear in line with the shoulder, looking good. Let's take 10 more. Exhale. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Fabulous. Your arms look great. Three, both arms are matching. Two, take one more. One. Now release that. Take your band behind you and feel a stretch somewhere around a Y or a T <clears throat> that works for you. Shoulders are open, beautiful. 10, and we're gonna do it again. Get some blood flow and then find another stretch, just any other T or Y angle, that's it. The wrists are straight here. You're gonna notice they try to get yanked behind you, but you wanna keep them neutral. I like it. So important for posture, everybody looks good. Inhale, exhale, bring that band back down to where you had it. One or two heels in the middle. I'm gonna suggest two heels. Uh, the elbows are gonna bend here so it's a little easier angle. This is the upright row. So your palms face your thighs. You're gonna pull up and up and you're standing tall and exhale. Very good, four. Five, I like it. Both arms are matching. Six, seven, there you go. Eight, and your neck is long. So your shoulders are working, but you're not lifting up the blades. The um, shoulders are still down the back. 10 more. Nine, 
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, I like it. All right, take that out of the way. Now this is gonna be dynamic. Take your hands back and make it loose enough that you can put your arms behind you and you don't have to contort your body. Inhale and exhale. And if you need more room, just walk your hands out wider. Inhale. Now we're gonna find a place along that path one more time and hold. Hi, Jean. Come on in. Five, four, grab the band. Three, two, and one. Let that go. I like to shake it out a little bit. Take your palms face up. Notice how your elbows are by your side. We're gonna open up external rotation. Wrists are pretty flat. Exhale. And open. Good, this is for shoulder health. This is really important to counteract the forward stresses that the shoulders are asked of them to do all during the day. So this is gonna help keep that shoulder healthy and prevent rounded shoulders. Or if they're starting to round, just start to bring them back. Let's do five more. Five, four, three, two, and one. Now just a little shake, like, like wet noodles. Take your arms in front with a slightly wider grip. Pull to your chest. I'm gonna to need to make it a little harder, so you just walk your hands in more. Exhale, exhale, good. Out, out, exhale, neck is long. Seven more, six, five, four, three, two, and one, let that go. And if you need a sip, grab a sip. We're gonna do triceps with the same band. The hand's gonna be behind you. Your elbow is towards the sky. Your other hand is by your low back. You're gonna push up. One, two, chin is lifted, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, back of the arm is working, seventeen, eighteen, chin is parallel to the floor, nineteen, Good, Jean, and then 20. Ooh, that burns right there. Take the other arm. The other one acts like a, an anchor. Now inhale, and you're gonna push up. Good, and just notice where your shoulders are. Ideally, they're parallel. Your hips are parallel, and you're not leaning over. You push up, your upper wrist is neutral. Sometimes the band tries to pull it backwards. Six, seven, eight. Nine, 10, you're doing great. 11, this is the back of the arm. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Good job, those are tough because the arm is up so you have that circulation issue and the strength. Take your band behind you again. Now pretend like you're gonna take a swim, almost like you're doing a breaststroke with the palms up. You go out like a circle, in a circle. Out, 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 I said that like a Canadian, out, <laughs> with a Canadian accent, out and around. Out and around, exhale. Out and around, one more time. Now other direction, so start wide. Out, two, three, four, 
and five. Now find a place that felt like a challenge out wide and take 10 little pulses. 10, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And then shake it out. Get rid of this for a moment. Grab a sip if you need it and grab your small weights. So grab your um, maybe anywhere from two to six pounds. And go out like that. Two, three, four, five, six. There you go. Seven, eight. And check your knees, they're soft. None. Yep. 10 and see if you can avoid the shoulders coming up just the arms without the shoulders okay 12 yes 13 14 and 15 now take your shoulder circles with them down low open up the feet a little bit kind of like an athletic stance knee soft now go forward if it's too heavy of a weight, take a lighter weight, or you can bend your elbows a little bit to shorten that lever. You're trying not to let the, <laughs> the uh, weight kick you back. And just for the high benefit, low risk, we're gonna keep our hands about shoulder height and not go higher for now. You have that little athletic stance in your knees. It's like a shock absorber, George, or a force, a uh, little, little uh, shock, shock in your knee. Two, one more. Now keep the weights handy. Just get them out of the way for a moment. And you know how we do this Tai Chi move. Go around five, four, three, two, and one, now we're gonna grab that again overhead. So it may be that you need a little lighter weight, probably somewhere between two and seven. Push up, two. Now when you do this, get those little shock absorbers on. You really wanna make sure your low back doesn't get more sway than usual. Six, seven, Eight, nine, good, neck is soft. 10, now see if you can do five more. If not, it's okay. Just do as many as you can, take a breather. Three, a little bit of an ab tone here. Two, and one. Lower those weights and take a little sway. Five, four, three, two, now this is gonna be a rear flat. Take your um, little weights that you just had. Now, athletic knees, watch how my back is gonna be, I'm gonna use the word straight. The back is never really straight, right? Cause it's got natural curves in it, but it's flat. What you're definitely not doing is rounding, okay? So your booty's kind of up. You don't have to be parallel to the floor. The back of the shoulder is in Line with the grab in line with gravity, the rear deltoid is working. If you drew a line through my shoulder to grab uh, pulling down, so it's rear deltoid, and I'm going out like a Y. And just notice if your arms are right and left symmetry. Sometimes that non-dominant arm gets left behind. So pay attention to both. Feel the back of the shoulder. Your knees are strong. All right, three. I like how you're controlling it on the way down. You're not letting gravity just yank your arms down. Exhale, now let those weights down for just a moment. I like to just do this release. This is something you can do during the day too. Mammals hold tension in their muscles and the nervous system. So we just gotta let it go. Now I do wanna isolate the calves for a moment. So if you wanna hold on to something for both calf raises, just to wake up 10, we are gonna do a single calf raise. So I've got this little bar here, this little foam roller, lift up your heels. Now. When you're doing this, your knees are soft 
and just notice how as if there were a tennis ball between your heels, your ankles don't sickle out. So you go up and they do not sickle out. So if you're not sure, look at them because it's so easy for the ankles to go out the way that they sprain. Now the challenge is if you want to stay two feet, but the challenge is what I'd like you to do is take your right foot behind your left or on top of. So you just do a single calf raise. Let yourself use something so that you can put the bones in the right alignment. Follow that bone rhythm. All the toes get weight. Don't let the pinky toe have all this body weight. Five, I'm gonna turn to you. Six, seven, eight, nine. Now, 10 on the other side. Okay, take that foot out of the way. Now look how my pelvis is level. I'm not letting my hip kick out. There you go. Keep that knee long <clears throat> of the working leg. Four, now is one weaker than the other, is one stronger than the other. Five, six, good. And try to lower it with control. Seven, so you work both sides. Eight, nine. Okay, let's do one more set. And lift up the other heel, 10. I know we do calf raises in class a lot, but at least one day a week, I like to do the singles because it's so interesting how one side's usually not as strong. And a lot of times with multiple sprains, like me, my left ankle, or you're non-dominant. So this gets it a chance to be stronger. And notice I'm not activating the neck. Now you're gonna do 10 on the other side, go up and down. And you can usually tell right away. So we're making that even. Michelle, you mentioned how much this helped you. So we keep those gains at minimum once a week doing this. Usually once a week is a bare minimum for the maintenance on these. Two to three times a week for strength gains. And we need that for bone density, don't we? Two. Woo! Now this time we're gonna just do a pure balance. So lift up your foot, put it anywhere. And I'm gonna count. Lack of one-legged stability for a minute was shown to be a great predictor of falls in the future. So we don't want that. All right, one. Twenty going to sixteen. Forty. And sixty. Now we're going to lower that with control. That was great. And that strengthens the glute medius. And that is what people get gluteal amnesia from, especially after sitting for a long time. And then their back hurts. Usually the booty won't tell you it hurts. Usually it'll affect the back. All right, other leg. Twenty. Forty. And lowering this hand, lower that foot. Perfect. And then a set of push-ups. I'm just going to show a few things you can do upright. You can also do these on the floor. I, you know, I just like to mix it up so you know if you're on your own ever, you can do things. And all you need is a prop. Look, even the couch works. Bend your elbows, two, three, four. Good, Jean. Way to be clever. Love it. Love that ankle. Six. Good, Betty. Seven, nice, Shereen. Eight, way to keep the head back, Shereen. Nine, good, Michelle. Now shoot for 10 more. 10, nine, eight, seven, 
six, five, four, three, two, and one. Perfect. Now bring it down to the floor. We're going to stick with our bands and you want to have your other stuff handy. I am going to, I may lower my camera even more than that. So you're seated with your band, seated with your band. All right. Now you're going to put your band around your feet. Grab a sip if you need it. I like these a lot. But if you have trouble sitting on the floor, you can use your foam roller as a way to sit or your block uh, crossing the strap, pull your elbows by your side, check your neck, no tension, elbows by your side, Let me move my booty back so you can see my feet, pull. All right, exhale, nice. Grab more band if you need. Another option is you can also use two bands on this, elbows bend and pull. Uh, Betty, your posture looks terrific. You want to feel how strong your back is and how it's easier to lift up. Your ear is in line with the shoulder. Jawline is about parallel to the floor. This is really impressive. Exhale, pull. It's okay if you feel your bicep and your rear shoulder too. We're working that. And the lats. Notice how free the neck is at any moment. You can move it and there's no tension. Exhale. Now you can take your um, band or your handles and open up. You can do this with a uh, hammer grip or an open palm grip. Your main goal is that your elbow is by your side, that you open up your, <laughs> you open up your forearms in external rotation. Open. This is for shoulder health, our, our prehab versus rehab. Good, elbows glued even more, Jean. I think you can glue your elbows even more. Yeah, act like, so I have a sock here and I have a sock here. I'm gonna stick it between my elbows just to demonstrate. They have to stay there. You can't lift your elbows. That this, the, el the, el the sock won't drop. Five, don't drop the sock. Four, three, you have to go a little bit more than your brain wants you to and one. Now you can drop the sock on this one to demo. You take a wide, uh, almost like you're hugging a tree in reverse. Reverse fly, posterior deltoid. We did these with the small weights when we were standing up hinged forward. This is such an important one to strengthen too because of the stresses on the forward muscles. These muscles get overstretched and weak. So we, you notice we bias the back body a lot because I want us I want our posture to have a better chance at staying upright. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, take a little shake, relax that. Good. And see if you can take your, you can leave it crossed and take it down, kind of like you're making, I'll show you from the front, kind of like you're making a V, a low V. Now you can turn your palms the other way or this way, whatever way you can handle your grip. All right, lift up tall, 10. Yeah, there we go, they, that, everybody looks better now. 10, nine, good, eight, seven. You know the band's gonna try to snap you back. You have to resist, five, four, three, two, one. Now uncross the band. Bend your knees slightly. I'm going to show you from this angle. Bend. So see how your abs are helping you? You're going to bend your elbows and straighten them. Now look how you can make it harder. If you lean back more and elbows lift higher, you make it harder. Feel your biceps. 10, 9, 8, 7, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come back up. Now we are gonna go down again. Go down, bend your elbows and straighten. Let me show you from this angle. 
Yeah, it's like an upright row. Lean back more if you want it harder. Yes, Betty, good. Pull, zip, up. Now, every time you exhale, you can pull your belly in. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come back up. That was great. We're gonna take a break just to let the tension shake out. So you can make it a uh, bound angle. Inhale and exhale forward. Also, if you need a sip, this is a great chance. Let your neck soften and just enjoy a moment to release tension in the body. Shake, nine, shake it out. Exhale, nine. Good, I love it. Eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, take another inhale. And you're doing good. As you're ready, exhale to come back up. Perfect. We're gonna take a uh, foam roller now. I'm gonna get rid of the props for just a moment except for the foam roller and the drink. It's out of the way. Your elbows are gonna be on the floor. Your foam roller is gonna be under your shin. Now, at first, if you would like, just hold a plank just to get ready for 10. Good. And Jean, if you want, you can do just a regular plank. Yeah. Great. Now, see if you can lift up your hips with an exhale and an inhale lower. Now, this is like you're hiking. You're internally rotating your legs so that you're on your shins and you're not on your tibia, the bone. You're on your muscles versus your bone. Lift up your hips and keep, try to keep your knees long on this one. We'll do a bit knee one in a moment. Good. Three. Two. Now you can recover any way you want to. For example, child's pose with your shins still on the bar. That's going to decompress the low back a little. Inhale. Now on your exhale, we're going to do inchworm next, which is elbows down. You're going to put your roller a little bit higher on the um, shin, but still on the muscle. Now bend your knees underneath you and then extend in the plank. Bend your knees underneath you and extend in the plank. Try to keep your shoulder blades flat on the back. Exhale and pull under. I like when I see good. Four. Really scoop your abs for the, uh, the, uh, the abs to work. Scoop your spine, too. Now recover for a moment. Take a breather. Looks great. Just a child pose. We're going to do the um, inchworm to the diagonal. So your knees are going to go to your left elbow-ish and then your right elbow-ish. Planks in between. So here's the plank. Pull your knees to the left. Go plank. Knees to the right. Exhale. And exhale, exhale, and exhale. I like it. All right, six. This is going to feel like more obliques. Five. Pull the belly in towards the spine. One more on each. Exhale, exhale, and find a way to rest. Very good. Five, four, three. Now, you remember how we did the long-legged variation? We're going to add an oblique angle to that. So lift your hips towards the corner of the room and the high towards the ceiling. So it looks like up, corner, plank. Up, corner, plank. Up, 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 
exhale. All right, let's chop four more. Four, good. Three, two, one. Take a little breather, rest. I like it. Now on this one, we're gonna do a little back and forth. It's gonna be only about three inches or so. So let your elbows down, put your legs out on that roller and shift forward and back. See how the shoulders, the small joint, the joint of articulation. Your abs have to pull away from gravity. Four, three, two, push strong with your arms. One, take a breather in child's pose. Five, four, three, two. Inhale and exhale. Now to mix it up, take that roller to the front. Your hands, arms are gonna go long. Your legs are going to go long behind you. Arms in front. Elbows pretty long here. Go up. Good. Up. Good. Up. Pinky side down, almost like you're knifing the foam roller. Your shoulder blades are down the back. Your inhale lifts you. Your exhale lowers you. You lift. I like it. Let's try three more before we hold. Take two more. And then go up and hold. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, three, two. Lower for a moment. We're going to lift an arm off that roller or the floor, whichever one you're using. So when you're ready, go up. To add on, left hand comes back and touches your hamstring. That right arm is working strong. Right arm comes back and touches the hamstring. Left. You can follow that with your gaze if you'd like, as long as you can keep your shoulder blades down the back. That's the most common uh, compensation I see in this posture where people grab their shoulders up by their ears. So we want to keep the neck long and let the muscles below the shoulder blades do the stabilization, not the upper traps. Left arm back, right arm back. We have one more on each side. Keep the breath. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, return. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, return. Hold yourself up. 10, 9, 8, 7. Good, Michelle. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, some type of recovery, child's pose, press your hips back. Very good. Rest, five, four, three, two, inhale, and exhale. Perfect. So from the side, we're gonna add the roller to our side plank. Your elbow is down. I like to triple up my mat on this and make sure you, your elbow feels comfortable, okay? One leg can be slightly ahead of the other on that roller. Go up with your hand behind your head. Now just stability first. That hip looks great. See if you can add on six rotations. One, keep the hips pretty stable though. They're facing forward, it's just the spine. Three, four, five, Six. Now we're going to lower the hip, not the shoulder. The shoulder never collapses to get us down. Other side. You're going to roll that mat up or two, one or two times. I like three. All right. Elbow down. Here we go. Now just to hold stability first before we add mobility. Your hip might lift a little bit, Shereen, towards the sky. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Add on that rotation. Exhale, two, three, four, five, and six. Very good, wonderful. All right, grab either your Donna band or your sock. We're just gonna do a tiny bit for the feet here because it's so important. Uh, without intervention, it's easy to, you, you know, people that lose their balance. So I'm gonna use my sock just to show how easy it is. You can use a wash rag, you can use your Donovan. Place your sock down on the floor. 
and I want you to pick it up. Yep. And then drop it. Pick it up with your toes. It's like doing an ab crunch for your toes, a toe crunch. Pick it up, hold. You see how my toes are curled like a bird on a wire. Pick it up, still hold. See how I've got, I'll show you from the side. And drop. Pick it up. Hold the muscles on the bottom of the feet. Should be getting stronger. Pick it up. I like it, Michelle. All right, two more. Good, Betty. Gosh, great, guys. Up. And then let it go. Now the other side. Lift it up. Hold. Good. It's one foot different than the other. Lift it up. Squeeze that arch. Exhale. This is going to help prevent uh, balance issues. We have strong feet. This is one of the things that can help. It helps stack the bones properly. This is where the rest of our foundation rests. Really squeeze. If you are doing laundry or you drop a towel, this is one thing you can do. You can pick it up with your toes. I think I told you about that 78 year old woman who had the best ability I'd seen and she said, oh, it's just because I'm lazy. When I drop something when I'm doing laundry, I pick it up with my feet. I don't want to bend over. So you can keep that skill and then let that go. Now this one is going to be, watch this, place your foot on the floor. Now keep the mound of the big toe down and keep the pinky mound down. Can you see how all my toes are off the floor, but my mound of my pinky and big toe are down, heels are down. Now act like it's almost like you're drumming your fingers, drum your toes drum. So if, you, if your toes don't separate, put your hands down there and separate them. If your big toe doesn't separate, let me give you a trick. So you just use a rubber band or to show you how easy it is, I'm going to use my hair bow. You take your hair bow around your big toes. See how I spread them out? I walk my feet far apart. Look at that awesome space between my big toes now and my second toe. Once this toe gets rigid, you don't have a lot of chance on helping the prevention of a bunion. So you want to keep it mobile. So look at how I'm spreading it with my hair bow. I just took my ponytail holder out. But you can use a broccoli rubber band. If it's too hard with a broccoli rubber band, start with an asparagus rubber band. And that tension is going to help. So lift and spread. And look how that is. One more time. You can also do this if you're in the bath and you're cleaning your feet. Okay, we're gonna take that out, good. So look at how fresh the toes are, isn't that awesome? That's how toes should be, they should be like monkey toes. All right, let's go down back to our uh, forearms and our planks with our, whatever this is called, foam roller. Elbows are down on the mat and you're gonna take your elbows down so a little repeat of those, we're gonna get those upper bodies. So pull your knees under like an inchworm, 10 times, feel your abs. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Take a little breather, it could be a child's pose. And then we're going to do an uh, inchworm to the diagonal. So you're going to put your elbows down and you're going to go knees to the elbows. One side, straighten, knees to the elbow on the other. Knees, elbow, diagonal, inchworm. Four more, exhale, four, three, two, recover for a moment. We're going to do our pikes. I hope your abs are feeling it in your arms. Forearms are strong. Lift your hips up and down. Up and back to plank. One, two, three. Knees long. Good, Michelle. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Recover. Woo! We have one more, we're doing a second setup, which is the diagonal pikes. So take your legs long, take your hips up to the corner, 
down. Up to the other corner, readjust your roller on your feet anytime you need to. Up, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now on the tenth, recover. Woo. Now we're going to take that same roller on the swan. Extend your legs. You're going to take your elbows pretty long here, maybe a bit soft. Go up and down. Inhale up and down. Inhale three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now stay up. It's going to be great. Swan. Ten. Five. Two. Recover. All right. Now we're going to use that foam roller to get some tension out of the shoulders. And this is going to be great for posture. So lie sideways with your right armpit. Behind your armpit on that roller. And look how my hips are down. I'm just kind of pushing forward and back. Yeah, great. Now that lat, it's a big muscle, it's the biggest on the back, it twists. And you can access that part of the lat behind the shoulder, armpit-ish, right here area. So try some different little angles. I've got my hands slightly helping my head so it's not uh, straining. Now you can feel the rear deltoid too. I've got a little trigger point there, I feel. But somewhere in here, keep breathing, you should feel that lat. When the lat is tight, it's an internal rotator and it makes our arms do this. Kind of makes us look like a gorilla. So it's a muscle that when we release it, it can help prevent and fix rounded shoulders. Also, because it attaches to the back, it's really uh, important if it's tight, it's going to create some low back pain or compression in the spine. So this little roll, it's going to help our shoulders, our posture our low back, and when you're able to help your posture stay more open, it does influence mood, it does influence energy because you cannot even get as full of a breath. And when you're flexed forward, it, it sort of tells the system to depress or lower. So we want to, we want to do what we can to support our physical posture. Your physical state can improve your mental state. Breathe into that. And Let's try the other side. Woo. Switch your body. This is for posture, shoulders, low back. And if you have a trigger spot, which is an exquisite point of pain, it's maybe like a nickel size ball of tension, you can also just hold it on that and try to release it with a 90 second hold. Sometimes it releases earlier than that. <sighs> Go back, there's that rear deltoid. You're breathing, good. Finding out the different areas that need tension. Yep. Breathing, in and out. Breathing. Back and forth. All right. Experiment. Where you need the tension. Sometimes people like a uh, long arm too, or you can get some of those triceps back and forth. Looking great. All right, let's try about 10, 9, It's okay if you're starting to roll out that scapula, that shoulder blade where the attachments are, the trust layer. Five, four, three, two. All right. Now on the one, gently come up. When you sit, see if you feel, hand across, see if you feel that shoulder and that chest and that lat have opened. 
five, breathe into that new space, four, <laughs> three, perfect, Michelle, your puppy thinks it's the hands for petting, right? <laughs> Inhale and exhale, take the other hand to cross, go up and over, let's see if you change his size. Five, breathe into that new space. You want to tell your fascia your resting pattern. This is the new place. This is how you are stretched out. It gets used to being tight. And even when it's not tight, it goes back to an old pattern, a postural pattern, especially if you've had any injury, they call it a pain postural pattern. So you want to re-educate your nervous system and your muscles and your bones where you can actually be, especially after injury or years of tightness. The body will assume the old pattern without conscious intervention. Take an inhale. So when you sit up, it should be easier to have the shoulders and the chest open. Now we're gonna hit the IT band, one of the nemesis favorite places. Let's start on that left. If you need a sit, please help yourself. Elbow down. <clears throat> that IT band, just start, oh, lift it up. There we go. All right, so you're in a good plank. And anywhere, high gluteal fascia, iliac, uh, greater trochanter down to your knee. So anyway, on that side, just don't roll out the knee itself. So you can roll out back and forth. If it's too hard, put that foot down and take some weight off of that. So I just started kind of in the middle here. Lean a little, if you rotate up, you get that biceps femoris, that lateral hamstring a little, which is tight if, uh, in general on the athletic people. When it's tight, you can feel the knee or the hip. I don't mean to say it's functionally tight, but it just could use some work. And if you rotate down a little, you get a little bit of that lateral quad. Let's head a little closer to the knee, just not on the knee. Feel that tension, the iliotibial band. We need some tension for stability in the hip of the knee. We just don't want it overly. If you have lateral knee or hip pain, this is one of the first areas I like to roll out to see if you can get rid of that. The IT won't tell you it's tight, it'll tell you it's joints are tight, so it kind of gives you a red heron. Pull forward. Especially if you do a little biking, hiking, running. Now, you can move it up towards the greater trochanter, see if you have any tension in there, in the hip. Lean forward a little bit, rotate forward, and you start feeling that TFL, that tensor fascia lata. It's a three finger wide muscle. It gets over recruited as a hip flexor sometimes as a primary, it's not a primary, it's a secondary. You'll feel like you have a bunch of quarters in your front pocket. So if you feel that, you might even need a trigger point pause. You could also go over that gluteal fascia up here towards the hip, towards the iliac crest right here. So you're just experimenting. It's hard to go wrong here. The only wrong is just don't roll out that lateral knee. All right, you should start feeling good. Five, four, three. You can get big gains out of rolling this area out too. All right, now take a moment to sit, legs out. And if you just put your hands on that fascia, feel that difference. And you see how my right leg looks higher than my left. See how this one's dropped. It's kind of like it's melted. This leg is usually shorter and you see now it's a half an inch longer. So I didn't even have any pain, but that's how quickly it can help release some tension. So let's go to the other side, go elbow down. IT band, and we started roughly in the middle to sort of test the waters. Your other leg could help you out by being on the floor. Oh, didn't know this was tight. Oh, so that's really good information. You get ahead of an injury, that's pretty cool, or get ahead of a, of a, a perception of tightness. So right now I'm just in the middle. 
if you don't have anything there, you, you're you know welcome to move ahead to an area that you do have it. If you roll up, you get that more lateral hamstring. If you rotate up a little. If you roll take down a little, you get that more fastest lateralis out of quad. Head a little bit closer to the knee, but just not on the lateral knee. Give yourself a couple inches between the knee and your roller and try those different angles. Down. And just keep the breath going. Scan your body. Make sure you're not holding tension somewhere else when you're rolling out this area. That top shin can actually rest on the foam roller too. Just want it out of the way. Oh, this feels necessary. Oh man. And what you're doing is also getting a good uh, side plank. Muscles strong as you do this. We're doing it more for the fascia release. Now you want to think about a gazelle, how a gazelle runs or how a cheetah runs. And you see they're not tight and clanky. They are springy fascia. A strong animal in the wild you see has springy fascia. That's what we want. So we're going to now go up towards that greater trip canter. A little lower and you get that TFL, that muscle that is like a front pocket muscle. See how it feels. I'm going to move down so I'm in that view. Ooh. Good gene. Roll out that glute. Good. And 10. And nine. So when the muscles are really tight, where the fascia is really tight, like this IT band, it can wear you down too. Just excess tenor energy, spent restricted flow. So rolling this out can help with energy preservation. Your body was you want to feel how free it can be, not rigid and tight like a tin soldier. Feel like a tin man on Wizard of Oz. Take a ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. And then relax. Let's see if that leg looks a little better. If you touch it, it's a softer on the side. And the legs should feel a little longer. We're gonna get that upper back. So if you take your roller on your upper back and lift your booty like bridge, if you don't have the roller and you need something, the bridge is a great exercise. Just lift up your booty. So see how my booty's up? Roll out that upper back. Good. Nice. Hands behind the head helps. You can try back bend here. And flexion. You can deviate right and get near that right scapula. You can deviate left and get near that left scapula. The rhomboids are attached from the spine to the scapula, the medial border. And when the chest and shoulders are tight, which a lot of people do have that, the rhomboids are trying to get your shoulder blades back in the appropriate position. So a lot of times if they're trying to do that all day, if you've been working at the desk, they get tired and they get trigger points. So if you feel a little trigger points, that's what's happening there in the rhomboids. So we're stretching that out, rolling that out. 10. 9. And then just for a moment, come up and let's get that hip. So I'm going to have to sit on it vertical. You see how it's a little different than usual? Ankle to thigh and just roll out that piriformis. The um, external rotators run from the sacrum to the greater trip canter, to that hip bone, to that heart shape bone. So we're going with the fibers roughly. Yep. There you go. Ankle to thigh. If you find a hot spot, just sit on it. That's fine. 10, 9, 5, 2, 
Oh, hot dog. Let's hit the other one. Good job. Whew. Did anyone notice the difference on the right and the left? <laughs> yeah, I did too. I didn't know it, but my right side was tighter. Back. Back. No sacrum. To the greater trochanter of that hip bone. Good. Keep the breath. Good. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Ah, uh, very good. We're going to use this roller for what most people say is our favorite stretch. We're going to put the booty at one end vertically and then take your head on the other. That's why I like the three feet ones instead of the short ones, but the short ones are fine in the pinch, aren't they? So the arms are uh, like a T or Y. Now you can shift right and left. And what that does is massage your rhomboids again, your sacral attachments and maybe the base of your skull, the occipitalis. If you want, you can put your feet together like a bound angle or a butterfly. Now just let this be your Shavasana. Shavasana is corpse pose, meaning you let the chatter of the mind die so that you can experience who you are beyond the mind. The mind often tries to attach to thoughts to create a sense of ego, a sense of self, and you're even more than just that sense. So just take a moment to let everything go you're training the nervous system to be in a state of relaxation. Relax the feet. Feel the knees soften. Feel your pelvis relax, the pelvic floor. Feel your low back soften. Send the energy to your ribs. Let them drop to the abs. Sometimes they tighten unnecessarily. Feel the shoulders relax. Feel the chest open, feel the palms relax, relax the eyes, relax the mind, feel the jaw relax. And take a moment just to notice how it feels to be totally relaxed, to tap into that sense of peace. Another three. Two. Now, as you're ready, slowly come up towards a seated position and just let your hands come to your heart. And just take a moment to notice how you feel, asking yourself, how do I feel today? So you have an open communication and what do I need or what would be good for me today? Notice how that feels to take care of yourself, making a little promise to do those acts today. When you're ready, let your eyes open. Notice how free your body feels. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you came. Thanks for doing the class. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye.